Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Terratech. And on this episode, we are going to sort of be continuing where we left off. Now, in between this episode and the last one, I did manage to uh, change some th some things. You can actually see the uh, the sun is uh, you know setting over here pretty soon, so we're gonna have to do this in the dark. But before I, that happens, I want to show you my base here, or my base bot, I should say. You can see right here that the conveyor belts are moving around this thing. Unfortunately, the scrapper isn't uh, really working. I mean, I can throw pretty much whatever I want on there. In fact, I'll throw this on there just so you guys can see. It will go all the way around it. I can try throwing it directly on top of the object, uh, the scrapper, and it just will not take. See, I'm holding the thing down right now, and it just does not want to go on top. So at some point, that little object will work, and this setup will work because it's going to go around in a circle. Now the one thing I have run into an issue with is that it goes around in a complete circle and it will not go up this route right here so I think the only way to fix that would be to take this out and see what happens uh, it's actually stuck now let's do that okay so now it's going up that route uh, I maybe might be able to change that no I don't want to do that so that's something I can do uh, at will whenever I feel like I can change the direction but for now I'm gonna leave it like this because the object of this episode is to pick up all the items that we can and sell them now there's a few of them that I cannot sell no matter what like this uh, venture uh, Springer will it does not fit on the conveyor belt I cannot sell it with my little uh, terminals over here I can however pick it up and take it back with me and sell it to the big terminal over here so there is a way to make money off of those and those I give you a lot of freaking money so I would highly suggest doing that now I'm gonna pick up this stuff while I talk to you guys and the main reason I wanted to do this uh, on camera rather than uh, off camera like I've been doing is to cover a topic that I kinda started on but didn't get to finish because well we found some really cool weapons and I just I wanted to, to play around with them before we you know continue to talk about this but uh, mainly I wanted to discuss what you guys think so far of games that are in development being offered to players to play early but being charged for it now this game is obviously in development and I absolutely love it I paid full price for it I didn't get the download content which is the um, the R&D and that's one of the things and again guys I'm not gonna be criticizing this game uh, specifically I'm gonna be talking about all games in general and I'm not gonna be criticizing I'm just gonna be discussing some of the topics that uh, I find that they're doing right and some of the things that I find they're not doing very well and uh, it just happens to be the very first topic gonna be a little negative on this one because uh, I was gonna talk about download content one of the games that I absolutely love out there and some of you guys may have played it as well is Mass Effect I absolutely love the Mass Effect series I did not like the last ending but beyond that, I think they're one of the, the best games I've ever played. So with that said, you can imagine my, uh, my I guess you can say anger, because I was actually quite angry at it, uh, when I found out that there was, there was going to be day one download content. I don't really like that. I mean, I think if it's day one download content, you had the opportunity to include it in the game, and if you didn't, uh, you could include it for free because it's day one. Like, it just happened. You just bought the game, and there's already an extra piece for you to buy. It, like, really takes away the thunder, and it makes you feel like you were ripped off, regardless of whether it was done after the fact, and there's this many man hours, and this and that. Uh, I understand there's a whole other side to the business that most people don't ever get to see, but from the, the standpoint of a, a customer, I mean, the, those day one contents really suck. And with this game uh, that I absolutely love playing, and that we're not pl we're not going to stop anytime soon because this is a really cool game, and I can't wait to see where it goes. This game isn't even out yet. You know, it's still in development, and they already have download content that you have to pay extra for to be part of like the real beta test, where you actually get to see the the stuff that nobody else gets to see. You get to see it early. That to me screams uh, kind of foul play because you're already helping the game being developed because you're you know paying for a game that's not even finished yet you're, you're willing to put up with the fact that it doesn't work very well uh, or sometimes at all depending on you know how well the patch is going that day or that week and in that situation you're kind of uh, you're not even really rewarded with 
the best behind the scenes because you still have to spend even more money to get that privilege. And that's, you know, kind of messed up. I mean, when I say kind of messed up, I'm being generous because that's, like, seriously messed up. Uh, but, you know, the reason I bring up this topic in the first place is because some of you guys have, uh, you know, voiced your, your, you know, displeasure with some of the other games that are out there, including this one, the fact that it's not finished yet. And I, I really don't have that. I, I really don't feel like this one's taking its sweet little time. I've played other ones, other games out there that they really do take their time, and some of them will probably never finish. And that's the reason I wanted to talk about this, uh, this topic is for those games those games where you pay you know full price and you know six seven eight months down the road the game really hasn't made any changes and it doesn't look like it's ever going to get finished but you pay full price for it and i just think and they haven't really breached any contracts because they never said they were going to finish like it's it's a progress it's a, it's a game in development and it could or could not you know one day be done is uh, you know a lot of the ways they word that, uh, depending on if they get enough of the, the right people to, you know, invest. But I don't know. I I think that's kind of a ripoff, in my opinion, and I can see why a lot of people get upset about that because you a lot of people are actually just making games that look like they have a lot of potential. They get some money from it and then they just move on. Like they don't they don't have any motivation to ever finish the game because that initial investment they got from it is probably more than they're going to get when it finally gets done uh, and they don't have to put in all the work to get to that point so they really give the rest of them a bad name when they do that and so I think anyways that there should be some way to um, you know Steam needs to kind of police them a little bit and give them classifications and I kind of wonder what you guys at home would think of some kind of classification like oh this is going to be done in six months this is going to be done in a year this one is really early like right now you have betas you have alphas you have early access you have uh, technical uh, releases you have a lot of different you know uh, classifications out there and none of them really go with the other ones like at any given moment they can call themselves whatever they want and you can't really even you know say anything about it because it's not like in movies where rated R means this and NC-17 means this and PG-13 means that. You know, like there's no classification that I'm aware of for games that are still in development. I wish there was because a lot of people kind of get games like this. And, it, you know, it's a really exciting feeling. I remember the very first time I ever uh, had the, the pleasure of being part of a beta. And it was back in the day where... They were they only accepted so many people. It was a space game on uh, it was a MMO uh, RPG type space game. I can't remember what the name. Of it. I think it was something like Above and or Space. Uh, it's not the TV show Space Above and Beyond, but it was kind of like that name, like Above uh, Space or something like that. And it was really cool, and I absolutely loved it. They sent me a little CD in the mail because back then you actually had to, you know, you couldn't. You, nobody was downloading stuff. The internet was not that that fast, and nobody nobody did that. So that wasn't something that was going on, and I just didn't do it. Uh, they actually sent me the disc, and I had to wait for it to get in the mail. And then when I finally got it, I was super excited. And I got on there, and, you know, you you were, like, one of, like, 500 people who was allowed in there. Uh, of course, you didn't have to pay anything. The only thing they really wanted, they wanted you to be a beta tester, right? Like, they were willing to forgo the amount of money that they would make off of you in exchange for you, you know, adding... Um, you know, uh, wait to the server so that you could actually see what it was like when it was being used by actual people, a certain number of people, in this case uh, around 500 at any given time, uh, probably a little bit less because, you know, not all 500 is going to be on at the exact same moment. But it's, it's a way for them to do kind of a, a soft opening and check the stuff out, make sure it all works. And on occasion, you would get some really good people in there, even programmers and stuff, that would be interested in the game and would give you really valuable pieces of advice as they played through the game and found, you know, malfunctions, uh, errors, or, or bugs that obviously weren't meant to be there. And that was really cool. Really cool to be part of that. So I understand what a lot of people are going through. This like the very first one they've ever done. They're like, oh, you know, I'll pay $15, $20 to, to be part of a game that looks like it's going to be really sweet because who wouldn't want to be part of the next Mass Effect or, you know, uh, Elder uh, Scrolls, 
you know, a big game like that that kind of gets its start from fans and gives you a series that is going to live on for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years down the road and people will be talking about it for a long time. You'd be like, yeah, I remember when I did that, you know, like I was part of the beta for the original one and here you are playing like the fourth or fifth one down the road. I understand that draw. Like you really want to, to kind of see that happen and be part of it. But with that said, it seems like a lot of these companies know that and they're trying to like take advantage of people like that, you know, and they, they put out a, a game that, is nowhere near being done and chances are never will be and I don't know I just I want a, a timetable so that when it's not done at that time or it doesn't look like it's ever gonna be done at that time Steam itself or whoever it's on will take that game off and label it as such you know like there's still games on Steam that have been labeled as early access you know still in development and They've been there for several years, you know, like they've been there for a long, long time. No updates have been recent, no, nothing's being worked on, but they're still allowed to have that title. And some people will still be fooled. Holy crap, that's a lot of a lot of batteries. But yeah, some people will still be fooled by it because, uh, you know, they don't read the, the comments. They don't read, you know, reviews online to find out that, no, this this game is actually kind of full of it. They're, they're not producing anything anymore, and it, they probably won't ever produce anything more for it. And if you put any money into it, uh, it's just going to waste. You know, like that's that's what you get out of those reviews. But like I said, they're still making money off of it, and it just feels like every time that happens, I, I you know, it kind of bothers me because it's another gamer who's being taken for a ride, and uh, that that bothers me. I mean, maybe it shouldn't. Maybe you know, I shouldn't really get that concerned about what is happening to other people. But I don't know. As just a gamer in general, I don't like to see other people get taken for those rides because. Uh, back in the day when I was younger, games weren't like they are now. I mean, they 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 were they were interesting and very fun to play, and I absolutely loved them because I got into it at that that time. But I remember they used to pull tricks on people all the time. Like you'd go to the store and you'd see the the game on a in the box, and on the back of the box would be pictures of the game, right? But that, that it's not always pictures of the actual gameplay. Some of the time, it was pictures of the uh, the cutscenes, and the way you could always kind of tell if it was is whether it was too good to be true. If you looked at it and it looked absolutely beautiful, you knew the pictures on the back were absolutely guaranteed to be cutscenes. If you looked at it and the pictures were so-so, then you had to decide for yourself: is that a known company? Like, is it a, is it Blizzard? Is it Sony? Is it, is it what? Uh, do you think they could actually produce that kind of content with a, a small budget because they're, you know, pretty much a no-name company? If you think they can, then yeah, definitely go ahead and uh, risk it. But most of the time, you found out that it was the cutscenes and the rest of the game was either complete garbage or actually broken. Like, you couldn't even beat it. And there was really nobody to police those types of games and say, uh, this game is absolutely broken, don't put it in your store. And nobody's gonna buy it you know but now the internet exists so people are able to kind of go online and read those reviews but the same thing is kind of happening nowadays because of the sheer number of games that come out you have just thousands and thousands of games that come out every year and sometimes even in a, like a, in a few months it seems like all these indie games uh, you know there's just so many of them and it's hard to keep up with them that even if you are an avid reader and you try to stay up to date on everything that's coming out you're gonna miss a lot of games you're just not gonna know anything about them and it's kinda easy to get fooled on those now yeah you, you should do research on everything that you're about to buy that that's kind of a given but you know some people don't and I don't think they should really have to I think if you're a responsible game company like Steam you should be able to provide a, an easy way for those who don't want to put that extra effort in because you know you're a service like people they make money off of that because of the games that they sell and people actually use Steam quite a bit uh, they could provide that for you create a, a rating system and just be like this is where it fits in and this is where uh, you know it should be and if it's not there by this certain date we'll lower it down to a lower standard like I don't know you guys will have to at home let me know if you agree if that's something that you would actually like to see at some point uh, be be put into effect and if they if it is put into effect what do you think the rating system uh, should be 
You know, like how long do you give a game company to produce the game? Because it could be very, very early access uh, for the game. Like it could just be in its, you know, base components basically of working the stuff out. And if that's the case, what's the label for it? You know, like how do you label that? And if you do label it, do you think that would actually hurt a company in the long run? Because there's going to be those companies that are legitly or legitimately trying to come out with really good content and could actually use the money from people who believe in them that might be affected by it, you know? So it's it's one of those things, like, you have to take that into account as well as taking the gamers into account because you don't want to stifle the industry. Like, this is this part of the industry is absolutely amazing. The fact that people can actually help the games that they enjoy be produced. You know, that, that's not something that's been around for a very long time. That's, you know, something that people have, like, dreamed of if you were a game company, you're trying to reach the people instead of having to go to these, these big uh, companies that you have to basically sell your product to. And they may know nothing about video games. All they know is business, right? And they're like, okay, do you have all the, the stuff in, you know, in order so that we can see what your you know projections are and how much you expect to make and how much you're going to be spending on this and how much you're going to be spending on that uh it's it's the part of business that people who are very creative usually don't enjoy like when i got my first book published i had to go through the whole process of finding a, a publisher and uh, then when you find a publisher you have to figure out how to market your stuff to people so that people know who you are and want to go out and buy your stuff because you're brand new to the the industry it's uh it wasn't my my favorite part of it it was actually kind of a nightmare for me i, I did not enjoy that uh one bit but now they don't people don't even have to do that like you can just put your stuff out there on steam and people will find you which is just like i said amazing to have that that thing so i don't want to stifle the industry because i think this in the long run is going to produce better content in fact I've recently heard of a project where people can or are going to be able to donate to like movies and stuff, but instead of just uh, donating to them like they can right now, they will actually be given uh, a percentage or a portion of the profits forever. So if you invest in, into a new movie or a, a TV show or a Kickstarter of some sort, instead of just getting you know, the, the ability to say, I help those people out, and see what they produce, you actually make money off of it. And I think that's, in the end, going to be the finished product. Like, that's where you want to be because you're going to have people who can actually make a living off of investing in things that they believe. And in return, not only do they make money off of it and maybe you even be able to make a living off of it, but they actually get to see the finished product, which they believe in and they, they want to play anyways. Like, that's, you know, what better way... You know, I think that's what everybody really wants. Everybody wants to find that job that isn't really a job. They want to find that thing that they love doing and would be doing anyways if they could get, uh, you know, if they could make a living at it. And that's why I play these games. I mean, I love playing video games. When I share them with you guys, I have the dream that one day I could do it full time. It, will it ever happen? I don't know. Probably not. I mean, you know, YouTube is is one of those things where a lot of people are on there a lot of people play video games am i good enough to uh do a uh, a series where it lasts uh, for years i i don't know but there are certain games that i play that i absolutely love playing but again you know like with with the uh these games i, I really just think that some of them are ripping you guys off and if you guys know of any that you want to leave down in the comments of like, oh, this this is definitely ones that you kind of want to avoid. Uh, definitely do that. I mean, I don't want to get an art or uh, you know conversation started of like the worst games in the world, because you know there's there's uh, quite a few that I would put on that list that I played back in the day that were like I said just completely and totally broken. But I don't know nowadays the games usually aren't broken in the sense of you can't beat them. They're usually just broken in the sense that they're so badly done, you wouldn't really want to. Like, you wouldn't want to play through the whole game to get to the end. And uh, in those situations, like I was saying, I think they, they kind of rip you off, and they know it. You know, like, it's they're not even trying to hide the fact that they did it. They're just laughing about the fact that they got away with it. And I, I want the community of gamers out there to kind of come up with a way to police that. 
and I want them to do it themselves. It was almost like the movie companies back in the day when they were being threatened to, you know, have a have a, uh, a rating system made for them. They decide instead of letting somebody else do it, which you'd have no control over and no say in how it's supposed to be done, you would just do it yourself. And they created one, and so they kind of police themselves rather than have somebody else do it for them. I think gamers kind of need that. I think they, they need to figure out what they want in game companies and figure out how to go about punishing them themselves when they don't meet those standards. And right now, it just seems like the game companies really have the upper hand because if a game company does something that gamers don't want, yeah, there's, there's a good portion of them that will stand up for what they want, but there's also a good portion that they, they just they do it anyways. They, they keep playing. And maybe there will always be those types of people, but uh, I think as long as the, the community in general can kind of come together and at least agree on something, there's always a chance that you could stop that from happening again. And, you know, the gaming community, like I was saying before, has done that, bef you know, several times. Like with the the Xbox, when they were going to put all that uh, DRM stuff on there where it was going to be password protected and then you had to be, like, online when you did it and you wouldn't be able to play it otherwise. Uh, you know, they kind of came together and be like, well, if you're going to be that way, we just won't pre-order your system. And we're not, not only are we not pre-ordering your system, but we're not going to buy your system when it comes out. And so that was kind of interesting, you know, that they, they took a stand against that. And it worked. Like, they fired the, the CEO, or he stepped down. I forgot which one it was. But he no longer worked there anymore because of the comments that he said. Basically, you know, if you can't be online, tough luck. I don't care. Uh, you know, and some of you guys may be like, well, what's the, big, what's the big deal about being online? Well, for those of you who have family members in the military, uh, you know, they don't always have internet. You know, like, they, they play games because a lot of the time it's that hurry up and wait, you know, they gotta, they gotta get somewhere real fast, and then sit there for days or hours, uh, waiting for their orders to do whatever, and in the meantime, they're not allowed to leave the base, they're not allowed to really do anything, except kind of sit around and wait, or exercise, and, you know, yeah, maybe they can just sit there and exercise all day long, but would you really want to do that? Like, at some point, you want to blow off a little bit of steam, even if you're, or even if you're going to exercise, like, eight, nine hours a day, at some point, you're gonna want to sit down, and and be with your friends and, and just be like, okay, you know, this is me, this is my time uh, to have a little bit of fun, right? And one of the things they do is they play video games. They play a lot of video games. And, you know, it's a big gaming community right there. And when you make a system where you can't even be offline for a, a set of people who, a lot of the time, like I said, don't have internet, you really kind of tick those people off. And you tick them off even more when you're, you know, flippant about it and be like, oh, I don't really care. I mean, that's tough luck for you, uh, sucker. And it's like, you know, come on. Like, you got to have a little bit of, a little bit of respect. Even if you can't help people out, just being nice about it is usually more than enough. You know, like I, I can understand. There's a lot of situations a lot of people have, and you're not gonna be able to follow through with every single one of them. Figure out a solution. But with that said, if you at least make it look like you're trying then people will be like, well, we just have to wait, right? You know, it may never come. It may be too difficult of a solution, but at least they're trying, or at least they're working on it, you know? But he wasn't even willing to do that. And so a lot of people kind of got upset with that. And of course, you know, the PlayStation, I think eventually, in, in my opinion, it, it seemed like it won out to me. Like the Xbox, the Xbox One, I really had a lot of uh, hope for because the Xbox itself was really good. And the Xbox 360, I thought was a really good system as well. And had a lot of games on it and I was never really in the the PlayStation uh, you know group because uh, you know for me I think you know systems are really expensive guys and I don't know about the rest of you but I usually as a kid had to decide between one system or the other I wasn't able to get both and so it was either Nintendo or Sega you know it wasn't both of the systems and I kind of kept that mentality as I got older, you know, if I'm going to pay, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a system nowadays, uh, I'm only going to pick one of them. And I'm going to pick the one that I think is going to have the most games on that I enjoy. And so usually I went with like Nintendo when I was a kid. And then as I got older, I went with uh, the Xbox. Like the Xbox was the first system that I kind of broke away from the Nintendo. I did play the, the PlayStation 1 quite a bit. And I liked the Final Fantasy games on there. I liked all those games on there. But... It did seem like it was a little bit behind the curb when it came to the Xbox, and obviously it was because the Xbox came later, and 
Uh, it just kind of blew it out of the park. But, you know, then they came out with the PlayStation uh, 2 and the PlayStation 3. I think the PlayStation 3 was fantastic. It's probably right on par with the PlayStation 3. No, not the PlayStation, but the Xbox 360. It just, uh, like I said, the differences were the the remote uh, joystick, uh, joypad, whatever you want to call it. It was just different to me than the Xbox had been, and I had already gotten used to the Xbox. And you guys know exactly what that's like when you get used to a certain style of play. Trying to change that can be, you know, quite. Uh, it's not really difficult. It's just, it's it's awkward at first. You know, <laughs> you got to get used to it. And, uh, you know, you don't really want to do that all the time. Like, sometimes you just want to sit down and play. And so when you decide to do another system, you kind of take that into account that uh, there's going to be a learning curve there, you know. I'm going to have to get used to that. Plus, I'm going to have to buy all new equipment with, like, the Xbox. A lot of the time, uh, they made, like, their stuff transferable back and forth, especially with the 360 and the Xbox One. PlayStation did the exact same thing, and Nintendo did the exact same thing, but... It is something you have to consider, that it's not just the games on that system that you're going to be playing. Man, this guy's taking a long time to kill. Uh, but the games that are on the old systems that you can go back and play as well. And so, like I said, I, I went with the Xbox uh, for the original ones, but lately I've gone with uh, the Playstations. And again, I think part of it has to do with the fact that I can go back and play the original ones that I kind of missed on the last console that way. But... I don't know. It's 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 just one of those things. But I would I kind of got off topic there at the end. But uh, it's it's one of those weird ones where I can see a lot of people having a lot of different opinions on whether these games that are in development are really worthwhile or whether they've had bad experiences with it. And I've kind of been hearing a little bit from the people who've had bad experiences from it lately. Well, again, which is why I kind of brought up the topic today. And I really, really hope that you guys will reply back. Let me know what you think, because I'm quite interested. You know, maybe I am completely off base on this one, and maybe you guys are perfectly fine with it for the most part. Uh, I think uh, out of the ten or so games that I've actually played that are in development, m like nine of them have been really good, and the tenth one has been just okay. So I haven't had really any bad experiences, uh, in my opinion, just yet with the genre. But I have heard horror stories, so. With that said, I think we're going to go ahead and end the episode here, guys. Again, if you do enjoy these videos, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe. Definitely helps grow the channel, and I greatly appreciate it. Also, make sure, like I said before, to leave those comments down below. I do want to hear back from you guys. And, uh, guys, uh, again, I think on the next episode, we're probably going to... I don't know. I think uh, I'm going to finish clearing up all this stuff, go back and sell, and then I'll either work on the, the wall... To make it a little bit more secure and, and you know, add more batteries and uh, wireless uh, chargers. Or I will build us a, a fighting bot, which I think I might do if I have enough enough money when I finally go back and, and sell everything. Because uh, that's going to be pretty interesting. I want to go off and I want to explore some stuff. I kind of don't really want to leave this guy behind, though. Because I think there's some pretty cool stuff that we can get into if we start harvesting some resources. Because we have everything set up for it to go ahead and, uh, you know, go through the the uh, fabricator down here, the GSO uh, Grade 2 fabricator and the GSO Grade 3 fabricator, and make some interesting stuff out of it. Again, I don't know if any of the recipes even work yet, because, uh, you know, some of the other stuff in this game is kind of broken, such as the, the recycler is not working even in the remote right now. So that's, you know, something we can look forward to. But again, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time...